rest of Ireland, there will be a massive tornado. <laughs> Roll one, see one, Roll one take two. two. <laughs> Action. We'll just hold for one second. I can hear a really loud crunching noise that we're gonna get in our film. Who hears the crunching noise? Quiet on Okay. Action. Rolling. Sound rolling. Yep. Okay. Final set. And Roll one. Scene two. Take one. Action. Hey everyone, today's ready to we're talking about. It's is very sunny, as you can see here behind me. We can see that this is very sunny. Over here, the double is just to be very sunny for the next three to five days. Now, are very sad today as the Queen Elizabeth the second has died. Row one, same four, take one. Okay, so hello, we have a photographer here. Um, what do you do for photography? Do you know? So I'm an art photographer most of the time. So I'm taking analog photos, which is these kind of old photographies where you put a film in. Uh, and now and then I'm also going out and photographing people like I am photo have pho photographed you here today um, or other workshops or classes and these kind of things. Uh, so does your photographs any have any chance to go to the newspapers or something? Yeah, like Quite often they've been used for social media or in applications and these kind of things. But I prefer that well, my own uh, photographs are going to be exhibited on museums and galleries. So, so that's my art photo photography as well. So is photography your dream job or something? Being an artist, yes. And also being a photographer is very, very really great. It's something I enjoy a lot. but. Most of the time, I prefer calling myself an artist and take analog photos. Is there anything else you do for, except for photography? So sometimes I work in a gallery where I help out uh, and welcoming people and say welcome to the gallery. Um, so that's kind of one of the things I do as well. And uh, when I'm doing an exhibition, I'm also writing sometimes and recording my voice. So when my images are being for, uh, shown so they've been projected up on a screen and then you can hear my voice and hear me talking as well so yeah i'm also in the sound studio sometimes all right sorry i should have asked at the start so what's your name <laughs> my name is maria morbia <laughs> okay so what is your current work right right now right now i'm working on a new project uh, it's going to be about the 90s and uh, there's going to be a lot of photos in it. And uh, that's going to be this kind of slideshow where it kind of protects up a lot of still images. So it's not video, but it's kind of like these normal photos. Uh, I'm not that far in the process right now, um, but I'm st I still gather material. Uh, I'm still writing a couple of texts, but hopefully it's going to be exhibited somewhere in the future in 23. I wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> And then just take all your take your time to come out here. Mm. And when you're in position, you can all stand. We're doing a ASMR of Grunty Commercial and action. What? I can see your floating head. How did that happen? Basically, it happened. It was when I was little. It's really dramatic. I can't. I actually can't believe what happened to me. And now I'm just seeing a floating head. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's um, sad to hear, but uh, so, um, 
Uh, so, uh, what question do you think I should ask? <laughs> Scene three, take one. Action. Hello, welcome to Asian News. Today we'll talk about our glorious Lisa. Sorry, hold oh. there for one second. He's going to interview you. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you're speaking to the, to the interviewer, not the camera. Okay. Hello, my friend from China. Today we'll talk about our new new influencers on YouTube. About Stephen He and the failure named something something I forgot. Ah oh, yes, Stephen mm. He. I love Stephen He. Back in my day, mm. I have to climb mm. giant mountains just to get to my just yeah. to get to mm. my just to get to my lunch. Oh, and I remembered mm. back mm -hmm. in um something something. I mm. always I always I fought a dinosaur. Okay. Yeah. Roll one, same one, take one. So wait, tell us when you're stuck there. Okay, and we can call for action and take us when you're there. Action. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. So, our first question today is, what is your name? My name is Marcel Vidal. Uh, can you tell me more about yourself? Um, I'm a visual artist and I was born in Dublin, but I'm originally from Wicklow Town. And uh, my father is French and my mum is Irish. Okay. Uh, what do you do as an artist? Uh, I work mainly with sculpture and painting. So uh, I, have a, I work in oil paints and I do like quite large paintings. And then I also work with quite diverse materials to build sculptures. Do you work with like multi-million euro stuff? Like... No, not quite multi-million at this point. But uh, no, I, I work... Uh, like my, it would, well, this is a tricky question, and um, it's kind of talking about money, isn't it? Uh, what can I say? Um, the scale of my work would be kind of, uh, you know, it depends on the type of show. So if I'm doing a large installation, it could co cost a couple of thousand to build it. It all depends on the type of material used. So I use quite economical <coughs> materials like wood, timber, stuff like that to construct large sculptures. But then I might use something like a faux grass where I'll cover the whole gallery floor in grass. So that would have quite a high expense. And um, I also spray paint walls and stuff. And again, that would be a little bit cheaper, but effective for installations. And then when it comes to terms of oil paint, colors and stuff can range in a lot of prices. So some oil paint can be quite expensive, like your cadmium yellows uh, and your, your more uh, like your blues. You can pay a lot of money there. So I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> How did you become an artist first? So my, I grew up with art in my family. So my father is a, was a painter and my auntie, uh, Caddy Carmen, uh, she's a sculptor. So I've always been around art and my dad would look after me and my sister a lot in his studio. So I grew up in that kind of environment of being in a studio and seeing an artist at work. You know, while my dad painted, I had a daily practice of working as an artist. He was a full-time painter. Okay, so... One second, one second. Roll one, scene one, take two. Everyone okay? Yeah. Action. Is this your dream job as an artist? Yeah, I've always wanted to be an artist from a very young age. Um, it's, it's because of having a parent who was a painter, it's always been something that was possible. I know for some people that they don't have the experience of growing up in that environment. So for me, it has always been the thing I wanted to do. And uh, it was always my ambition to go to the National College of Art and Design on Thomas Street. And I graduated from there in 2009. So I've been making art for 14 years nearly. Did you inherit your skill of art from your parents or were you like really, really bad or something? Uh, no, I would have gained a lot and a lot of the, uh, from my, my father and a lot of the way I approach making art and approaching it as a visual language. Like I really learned a lot from being in the studio from a young age with my father. You know, he taught me that like having a daily practice and constantly investigating that practice. That's how you can develop the work. Do you know that it doesn't have to just be based in research or in, you know, maybe a philosophy, but it can come through just the making process. So what are you currently working on? Um, I've just finished two paintings that I uh, were recently in New York in the Armory and now I've moved into making some sculptures. So I'm working in the in the workshop and fire station and I'm working with welding and 
using metal to construct sculptures for a show in Driot in June next year. So do you use any 3D printers by chance? No, I don't use anything like that. I've never experienced the 3D printer. Would you like to? Um, I don't know. It's like the 3D printer, I, I would say, would have kind of a very, um, for me, maybe too formal, meaning that it, it would it'd be, you know, you'd have to design it before you make it, where my approach to sculpture is quite intuitive in that I will like take materials that I'm interested in, bring them together and kind of build off the shapes and forms that I have start to develop out of the work in that process. So, you know, like the, I use quite a lot of spikes and stuff and materials like expanding foam, which you can control to a degree, but they expand. So that it has a natural sort of form that it makes itself. You know, so I let that take up space, if you know what I mean? So that I'm like kind of building off how the work itself develops. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Alright, thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. Move on, scene one. Now move to the left. Or oh, to the right a bit. It's really Perfect. Move to scene one, take one. Just give some time for you, for you, uh, Faye, to step up. Thanks, you, Faye. Double check your voice. Okay, are you ready? So the first question I'd like to ask you is, what's your name? Vivian Hansbury. And um, what do you do for your work? Um, mainly sculpture, but drawing as well, um, and some video work. Yeah. Uh, how do you show your art? Um, in a gallery setting, or sometimes in an outdoor setting, like an installation outdoors. How did you become an artist? How did I become an artist? I, I was always doing it, whether it was Play-Doh, plasticine, um, cutting up things, always cutting up things and re-putting them together. It was, yeah, I was just always so going to do that. Clear, yeah, it did. did. Just hold me for the next question. Okay, so we try to come in from the bottom then, and we just go up and the bottom here. Keep rolling everybody, don't go. Uh, just make it look like this. Put that down Ah, oh, that sounds good. And then I'm just going to point this a bit more for you. So you're perfect there now, Babish, okay? You call me? <coughs> Sorry to interrupt your interview then. Option. So, what are you currently working on? Um, I'm just finishing up a project called Rain Play for Ballymun Axis, um, where I had to make a, a, a new prototype for a playground feature to make rain fun. Is this our dream job? It is my dream job, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what could I say? Oh, I suppose um, it's important that I let you know that the process of making is an important part of my whole sculptural process. So it's all about, you, you said to me, is it my dream job? And I, I guess I should let you know it, it really is because I just get to play with material all day. Doesn't sound like your dream job too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is your favourite uh, piece of artwork that you've made? Spinning plates. I made a piece called Spinning Plates and they had, do you know the blue willow pattern? It's a really old fashioned kind of plate. Um, maybe your granny has it. It's like a blue kind of um, scene of gardens on a plate. Anyway, I put those plates um, on steel poles and I had them stuck in a pond coming up onto the, the, the pond side um, in the botanical gardens. So they look, because they were moving in the wind, which was a really nice happy accident, they looked like they were spinning, even though they weren't. That sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> So if you bring it in probably about there, uh, bring it to about here and then both cameras will see. Can you both see him, guys? Yeah, I'll go with it. Yeah, go with it. Roll three, scene one, take one. That's when you're set then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Action. 
What's your name? My name is Julia. And what do you do? So I work as a curator uh, here in Fire Station Artist Studios and in other places like the Irish Museum of Modern Art or the Lab Gallery. How, how did you become a curator? Um, because after I did an internship in the Lab Gallery with the curator there, Sheena, um, and I saw what she did. So she makes exhibitions with different artists. That's what a curator is. And I thought it was really nice. So after that, I became a curator. And what are you currently working on? So at the moment, when I'm working here in Fire Station, um, I'm working on this project that we're doing now, where you're coming to make a film. Um, I'm working on other projects where we have international curators that are coming to visit um, Ireland. So they stay in Fire Station. Um, we have awardees, so people who, are, who get an award to make some work here in Fire Station, sculptures or uh, videos. And other than that, I'm working, I have an exhibition, it's a group show opening um, at the end of the week. So we have 20 artists that were selected by four curators. Um, and yes, these kind of things. Now, is this your dream job? Um, yes, it's one of them. I guess I could do other things that would be really nice. What are your other jobs that you'd like to do? Another job I'd like to do would be um, either being a teacher or being a writer or being an artist. Um, why would you pick another job? Like if you could have this job, that other job being a teacher or, yeah. or what you said, um, why would you be one of them instead of an artist? Well, for example, a teacher, because I really like um, I really like being with people and with children in particular. Um, and I think it's quite nice to spend all your day with children. But um, I think you have to speak Irish to be a teacher in Ireland. And I don't speak Irish, so that's not going to work. <laughs> you don't have to? Yeah. Well, I haven't tried. <laughs> well, that's all the questions that we have. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have a question? Don't call anybody. Take care of that account. Yeah. What was your first art piece? What was my first art piece? So I don't make art myself, um, but I work with artists, so they show me their work and then I try to uh, get them to exhibit somewhere in a gallery, for example. Um, but I can't, I can't remember who was the like, first artist I worked with ever, but um, there's loads of nice artists who live there, for example, in Fire Station. Yes. How long have you been doing your job? Um, so twenty two, so four years and a half since I graduated from my masters. Why did you pick the Um, because I didn't know what else to do, and it just kind of happened. <laughs> it's not a great answer, but it just yeah, just kind of happened. Yes. Um, do you have any uh, future projects that you're thinking of, or you're working on in secret? In secret. <laughs> well, actually, yes, in secret. We're in my head working on something, but, but since it's only in my head, I don't think it's going to go very far. But I can say what because it's secret. Do you have any moments where you like don't want to be an artist? Yes. Um, well, since I'm not one, I, you know, I, I don't feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's loads of moments where I'm like, oh, do I really want to do this? Yeah. Where do you work with communities? When? Why? Like, Why? Groups, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the part of uh, working in the arts that I really like is when it's not just with artists, but when the arts community gets to work with people outside the arts, so people who are not artists. I just really like the the encounter between the two. Um, I think it feeds off normal life plus artists go well together. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Art Me Red Weather. 
um, today it's very uh, foggy um, in Dublin and it's kind of um, raining. It's it's quite rainy over in Dublin and over here up at Donegal it is very um, Donegalish. Then we go down over here to Mayo and as you can see in Mayo it is going to be quite cold with top breezes from 6 to 10 degrees over to over to wherever the hell this is in the world. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Okay, Dari, let's look around. I'm going to watch my video and begin your interview. Action. Uh, sound uh, file. The sound file is two. Um, and two. Take one. Okay, well, action. action. Well, hello. Today, what's your name? My name is Marie Farrington. Where are you from? I'm from County Kildare. I was born in Kildare and I live in Dublin. That's nice. How, how did you become an artist? Um, I became an artist because I've always been very interested in materials and the meanings that materials can have. And so when I was in school, I was interested in chemistry and geography. Um, and so I suppose in thinking about all the meanings that the things that surround us can have, um, art became the best way for me to explore those meanings and maybe question them a little bit as well um, and watch how they can transform over time. Um, so I was interested in how art can be almost like a less literal language than the language we use in everyday life. Well, tell me more about your work. Um, well, my work is mainly sculpture. I work a lot with materials like clay and plaster, and sometimes I work with sand as well. Um, and the sculptures that I make often change in the gallery. So sometimes I make work that has um, kind of fragile elements, and I'm always interested in how that can change without my control over the piece. Well, is this your dream job? It is my dream job. I love being an artist. Uh, I think because it's not really like having one job at all. I actually do lots of different things and days look very different from each other. So sometimes I'm in the studio all day. Sometimes I'm working on applications or proposals and sometimes I'm out on sites doing site visits. And so I get to see lots of interesting places and meet lots of really interesting people. Well, I'm interested. What are you currently working on? At the moment, I'm working on a permanent public commission, which is a sculpture that's going to go outside. And it's in a place called Skerries, which is on the coast of Dublin. Um, so my sculpture is going to function as a handrail. Um, and so I'm really interested in how that can help people uh, explore the site in a different way. Um, and the handrail is made from sand on the beach at the, at the site. So I was interested in how I could incorporate the site of the sculpture into the sculpture itself. Um, and so it's made from sand and then on the surface there's braille. And Braille is like a series of dots that allows people who are visually impaired to read. Um, and so my sculpture has Braille on the surface and it encourages people to touch it. Well, thank you for coming today. I hope you have a great day. I hope you do too. Thank you. Before we go, don't cut, don't cut anybody. Wait, 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 don't press, don't press, don't cut. Is there anyone else any questions? I know. Okay. Um, what was your favourite uh, thing to make or what are you planning to make? Oh, my favourite thing to make. Um, I'd have to think about that for a moment. Hmm. I think my favourite thing to make was a piece that I made for Irish Mu Museum of Modern Art in 2019. It was called Settings and it was a series of 98 plaster casts. So it took ages to make. Um, it was really, really heavy and really difficult. Um, but then when the piece was made, it kind of looked weightless. So I liked how um, that kind of contradiction was in the piece. And it, it turned out for, in a very unexpected way. Yeah. Have you, have you ever decided to be in like a different career? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> I've gone through lots of uh, thought processes around careers. So I'm also a secondary school teacher and I'm on a career break at the moment. So at the moment I'm a full time artist, but I have been a teacher for six years. Um, and that's a career I'm interested in um, in the future again. Um, but yeah, in the past, I've been very interested in uh, going into a career in chemistry, um, I think because of my interest in, in materials. Cool. Today 
on the weather news, we have a we have a map of Ireland, which there's a which a lava storm is coming down to. What's what's the bottom stick? What was the what's the bottom? <laughs> Carry, Carry. Roll two, scene three, take one. Yep. Action. So, what's your name? Uh, my name is Cecilia, Cecilia Biolo. And where are you from? Well, that's an interesting question. Cause, uh, so basically, I was born in Italy, but I was raised in Ireland. So I feel like I'm from two countries. And how did you become an artist? I think I was always an artist, you know, and uh, then I kind of went to college. I suppose going to our college kind of, kind of gave me the tools to become one. Tell me about your work. Okay, so I mainly work in sculpture, so like 3D and I like from, from carving to working with clay, different mediums, but I also work in 2D, so like painting, drawing and, and all that. And is this your dream job? Absolutely, yes. What, what are you currently working on? I'm working on, on an exhibition that I'm going to be having in February 2023. And so I'm making a lot of different stuff and, I'm a, you know, different types of sculptural pieces. And if you had one other job, what would it be? It wouldn't be. That's it. And what's your favourite um, colour that you work with and your favourite colour in general? So my favourite colour is black. So I usually tend to wear black, but in my work, it kind of varies uh, on the materials that I use. So for example, if I'm working with metal, I like to use like metal kind of rusty colors or stainless steel, but I do like the color white. I would, a lot of my work is actually very pale in color, but I always wear black. Well, that's all the questions we have. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, do you paint? Yeah, I've started painting about three years ago. Like I've always used the medium of drawing before I make any sculptures, I would sketch it, but I never really painted as such. But three years ago, I started painting. I got a question, go ahead, Jenny. I also have a question if you like used clotting for like pieces of art, like cloth materials. Cloth material? Mm, not. Not consciously. What I mean is that I would use sometimes pieces of fabric uh, with plaster. Um, that is a really interesting question because I was actually thinking about about making a, a piece of work using kind of fabric. So, how did you know you like are going to be an artist? Like, when did you start that? I think when I was very young, um, you know, I just kind of remember being very happy, drawing, colouring. And uh, then in school, that was one subject I was really good at. I was really bad at maths, I was really bad at science. But, you know, every time I went to an art class, I was really, really, really good. So then with time, I was like, you know, I did think about doing other jobs, you know, going back to your question, you know. I was thinking of becoming a vet for a while because I love animals very much. But then if I, if you to pursue the career of a vet, you have to study medicine. So I was in between the two. So I still love animals very much, but I make art. Have you ever tried to make like a human being out of like a, out of any material? I did actually, that's hilarious. Cause I mean, if, you, if my mom was here, she would laugh her head off because when I was a, the first time I went to our college, um, I made a replica of a, a palm reader, you know, those kind of clairvoyant type of people, you know, so, but I used myself. So the cloth that I used back then would have been, do you know, they sell like this plaster of bandage, uh, they're kind of like plaster of Paris, but they're rolled up in kind of this type of cloth that dipped into plaster. So I kind of did it on myself and my hands. So I made a whole figure using myself as a, as a kind of a model 
And then the day that college finished, I had to bring it home. So because she was sitting like this and it became solid and was pure white with all the hair and everything. So my mum, I was quite young, so mum came to pick me up and uh, we, her name was Catherine. I named the sculpture Catherine. So she was in the car like this, sitting down the front seat with the seat belt and everything. And my mum was saying, like, people were in the car, you know, in the traffic light. And I was like, get a fright because it looked like she was driving a ghost, you know. But that was my sculpture. That's really good. Yeah. That was the first and last time I made a figure, though. That's, that's all my question. Okay. Good. Oh, it was really nice meeting you all. Bye. 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 I don't know. Bye. <laughs> the um, the biggest storm go to America is have is coming uh, coming to destroy Cook. <laughs> Road to C three take one. What's your name? Janine Davidson. And where are you from? I'm from Belfast. And how did your life become an artist? Um, I, I had a great art teacher in school, so she really encouraged me up in um, the Dominican College, Fort William. So then I came to NCAD in 1993 and I stayed here and have been making art for 30 years. Yeah, tell me more about your work. So <clears throat> I kind of started um, working in printmaking, like different types of print. And then I did some courses in community arts education. And um, so I kind of worked with a lot of community groups. And then I went back to do my master's and I did like sculpture, but it was more film and photography. So my work now is kind of more lens based and it's kind of um, just film and photography and landscape. What are you currently working on right now? So I'm working on this lovely material that I shot in um, the Dutch Caribbean in 2018. So. Um, I'm trying to make an immersive uh, film installation. Is this your dream job? Is this my dream job? It is. Um, yeah. Sort of, yes. Sometimes, not all the time. It can be hard work. If you had a different job, what would it be? If I had another job, I think sometimes I think I'd like to be a horticulturist or a gardener or something like that. Yeah, more question. When did you become an artist? Like when did you start doing art? Um, well, I suppose I always did art as a child, but then I suppose officially in the eyes of the tax man, I got my um, artist exemption certificate in 1998, I think it was. Any question? Any question? What's your favourite work you've done in your career? Um, I did this great community art project actually, which I loved because I'd been working with this group of older people in Fibsborough, you know Fibsborough? So I worked with them for about 16 or 17 years kind of doing painting but then they had all these interesting stories that they used to talk about whenever they were doing their paintings all these like stories about Dublin and I find that fascinating so then I kind of um, did this project with the National Museum and the Fibsborough Retirement Association and um, Henrietta Street Adult Community Education and Stanhope Street Primary School so the kind of like the older it's kind of a bit what you're doing the um, different generations kind of interviewed each other and they talked about things that they used to do in their childhoods and they shared stories and objects and the exhibition was all in Collins Barrack. So I think that was very fulfilling. Just before that question, uh, Gary, you're going to be around that way, so just to give you an idea. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the tip is going. The great, the great, so. Uh, okay. Uh, so the great, the What's your favourite thing that you've made and the favorite, your favourite colour that you've used? Uh, my favourite colour. Um, in my work or just my favourite colour? In your work. Um, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of like muted colours. I'm not very good at strong colours, but I suppose I kind of, I don't know, green keeps always coming out for me. I don't know why. <laughs> and <laughs> um, what is my favourite artwork that I made? Well, I really uh, was very proud of my master's show in NCAD in 2012. Um, I have two kids and I kind of, you know, it's like my third child. I loved and nurtured it and I kind of did this installation in School Street up there behind um, Guinness. So I was really happy with how that turned out. So. What was the first art project you made? Um, 
Um, well, do you have to do your, the degree the degree show like for the BA and NCAD? So that was called Lessons from History, which I also really liked as well. And then I went traveling. So the kind of first major one I did then as a qualified artist when I came back was in 2001 and I kind of made this um, this printing press that had an image of itself on the roller. So it was like a, an old manga. It was kind of referencing prints. It was kind of printing images of itself. Can I ask you, what's, how would you describe the community art project? Uh, community art projects. So um, I suppose community art projects are working um, closely with different community groups. Um, they're either communities of place or communities of interest. Um, and different generations, I kind of like to work intergenerationally. So that's why I like that other project as well. But since um, COVID has kind of put a stop to kind of the intergenerational thing was kind of put on hold for a while. But I think that's really important. And I think sometimes in Irish culture, the kind of intergenerational thing is not as strong as it used to be. Do you have one last question? No. Not real. Anyone else? So, director, cut. Cool. Bring the coffin over in. Oh, actually, okay. where's my camera go? Oh. <laughs> So, like, I think around five or six months ago I made a YouTube channel. Originally I just made, um, like, so I was obsessed with flags at the time for whatever reason and I just, I've seen people make, like, animations where they turn one flag into a different one and, yeah, I was inspired by them and just used, and used um, an animation software called Flipclip to, uh, make my own and made my own series on this where I made it the Russian alphabet instead. Yeah. Um, Can you imagine that your animation is playing behind you on the green screen on the yeah, monitor and tell us about your favourite one? I think